Hello everyone, I'm Jamie and I work for the Midpoint Library System. Um, and welcome to Midpoint Maker Art Break. And today is going to be about Q-tip painting. And Q-tip painting, you may have done before, sometimes some schools will do this. Um, I know I did it when I was in grade school. And basically you're using the Q-tip to make circles or dots of color on your piece of paper. Now to go over our supply list, um, you'll definitely need at least a sheet of paper. You can feel free to have a canvas or maybe heavier paper, watercolor paper. Um, copy paper is just fine if that's all you have. I'll actually go ahead and do the piece on the copy paper. Since the way we do this doesn't necessarily need a ton of paint. And just remember as we're using water, and I'm like you'll wanna have a cup of water with the paint, you'll want your brush to be fairly dry just so it doesn't really add a ton of water to your paper and break it down. Now if you have something that's more heavy like canvas or even a canvas board, it doesn't have to be one that you would hang up on the wall necessarily, but um, I think you can even buy canvas sheets of paper and um, or cardstock or watercolor paper, whatever you have, just be aware of maybe how it might um, work as you use, use it. So if the thinner the paper, the most likely the less amount of water you want to get on it so that it doesn't tear up the paper. And another item that you really need to have, of course, is the Q-tip. And you'll definitely need several of these, um, especially if you get real messy. And if you have kids that are doing this with you, I would keep maybe one Q-tip per color. And when we get to paint-wise, you I would do acrylic for this one, but you can actually do a lot of different mediums with this and it'll be just as successful. But in my example, I'm going to do acrylic paint. And I have Liquitex here, but you definitely don't have to use this. You may have some of those craft paints that are a lot cheaper, perfectly fine. Use those, they'll be thinner, but it still will give you the same effect that this will. And say you don't have paint at all, don't you worry. You can still do this with markers, uh, especially if you have like a Crayola marker set, because all you're doing is creating dots of color to make your piece. Now obviously, the Q-tip kind of gives a pretty good sized circle. So if you have something like a ballpoint pen, multiple colors of ballpoint pen, or even just a black marker by itself, it's gonna take you a lot longer because the tip of it's a lot smaller, while the Q-tip's a pretty good size. So it gives you a good sized circle. But if you happen to get some of these messed up, that's also kind of great because you can always just throw this out and you should have um, another one to be able to grab. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever known anyone to have only like four Q-tips in their house unless they're almost out. But um, you, I'm gonna suggest that you have at least one uh, paintbrush with you just to kind of help you mix up some of the colors. If you don't have that many colors, I would suggest definitely having white, a red, a yellow, and a blue. So definitely the primary colors with a white. And if you have other colors like purple or pinks or other uh, tubes of paint or bottles of paint that you really want to use, feel free to use that. Don't feel like you have to stick with my colors. I'm mostly using just the primary colors to show you that you don't need to have a huge amount of color 
or spend a lot of money on tons of paint colors to get results because the primary colors really can mix up into certain tones that you would want to use anyway. And with something like this, since we are dipping Q-tips in, it does take a little bit to mix up maybe a good sized amount of paint if you are going to mix your colors. And let's see, definitely Q-tips, brush. Make sure you have paper towels, of course, because you'll want to wipe your brush on there or even have another set of paper towels off to the side to put the Q-tips that may get messed up or that you just don't want to use anymore. And of course, a cup of water. I would get some sort of paper plate or this is styrofoam that you can use as a palette because you'll want to squirt out some white, red, yellow, and blue or any of your colors that you need to use. And if you're going to mix some of your other colors, I would leave some space on your palette to mix those colors. And so Q-tip painting, <laughs> about that, you can also say it's a good example of pointillism. Pointillism is a technique of painting that was created in the 1800s by um, George Sherratt and Paul Siniak. And they were both artists who came out of the Impressionistic age and really came up with this technique um, together that really was used by a ton of artists even today. And again, it's really just a technique of small little dots in patterns to form an image. And knowing your color theory and knowing how colors mix really is important for this if you want a pretty detailed piece. And Vincent Van Gogh was also one who used this technique. He uh, was a part of the Impressionistic era, and this is a self-portrait that he had done, and you can tell that all these little colors are all little dots, or, or even little strikes of line, but all of these colors are creating his piece and his face, and I really love this piece, actually. He did a lot of self-portraits, and this one is probably one of my favorites. Um, like in the background, he used more of the light blue to create a lighter color and had some orange. He still has some red and blue over here, but he definitely has a lot more darker blue tones. So it's kind of the way you use the, the dot pattern and which colors wear really affects how it looks because your, your viewer or the person who's gonna look at your piece is not gonna be real close to your piece. They're gonna to tend to walk by it at a pretty good distance. So the dots will merge in your brain and allow you to see a fuller range of tones. And let's see, and this is George Surratt. He was, um, he's pretty famous for this picture, for this painting. Uh, you see it a lot on just a lot of different museum type things or um, uh, journals, posters, etc. cetera, um, magnets I've seen them on. And it's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. And this was a, an island that tended to be for people in uh, France that were a little more of the upper up people, upper class. And this was the Seine Rev River that's also in France. But all of these are real tiny dots of color that are really fine enough that you, it does create quite a nice picture together. But when you really look up close to it, you can really see all the little dots of color to create some of these nice darks. It's not straight black. And I hope you can see that through the camera. But 
he was one of the dominant ones, obviously, since he came up with it along with Senyak. This is another one of his called the Seine and Le Grand, and, or Le Grand Jatte. It's also the same island that you saw a picture with all the people on it. But this, this style, he has a little more of a loose dot going on. And, but all together, you can tell that it's a, the river with a boat, a sailboat, and someone rowing over here. And there's another building off in the distance and a beautiful tree close to you in the foreground. And I also wanted to show you um, one of Paul Signac's pieces. This is called Capo de Noli, I believe. And I love this one. I love his color choices. And you can tell that it's almost all primary colors, like the blue and red and yellow to create this gorgeous piece. Now, he, yeah, that was the only piece I had got. Um, and this is just, I really love that one. That's one of my absolute favorites of his. And so that's an idea of pointillism and um, actually I might have grabbed the wrong pain. The last two might have been Signac now that I'm thinking about it. But with Q-tip painting that's going to be sort of a pointillism, our painting that we're going to do is going to kind of simplify matters, especially if you have real little kids that would like to do this with you or with you as a family group. You don't have to be as, as detailed as I will be, um, and I will kind of rein it back. But one way to get used to the way you use a Q-tip is to do sort of a chart so that you can explain how the different colors mix. So with it being pointillism, and I'm going to kind of gradually pull those out, with pointillism, so to make almost a visual orange color, you can mix some orange and, and dot them within your space, or you can take yellow <coughs> plus red dots and make a pattern. I would use yellow first and then add the red and it will give a visual appearance of, of orange. And with red orange, this, this chart, I took a mixed orange of the red and yellow and put it down first. Then you add red on top of it and that gives you more of the red orange. So exactly with, with the yellow orange, same type of idea. You always wanna try to lay down your lightest color first Excuse me because it since it's going to be the lighter color it will be more influenced by the darker color if that makes sense so you lay your yellow first and then you top it with the orange and then as it gets further away it will give you more of that color that yellow orange now you may be thinking and eh, that doesn't really look like the color but you have to think about how far away you would potentially be standing from a painting. And even as you see these three, you may not specifically say, well, that looks orange. But each three, each of these three boxes do give you three different tones of color, at least. <coughs> Excuse me. So at least it's giving you some different looks. So if you want to do on your own paper, you can do this. I'll kind of hold it in line so you can read it for maybe later. Um, but you can do the same thing, just walking down. So we wanna make green. Well, yellow and blue dots can create more of a green color. And obviously if you have a thicker paint or if you're painting thickly, your blue over top of the yellow may kind of pick up 
a little bit on your Q-tip and mix itself on the Q-tip. So you may have some kind of stamped circles that look green. And that's kind of the idea too. But visually, you can have these separate dots give a visual appearance of a different color. <coughs> so if you used markers, you would still do the same thing. You would lay for a yellow green, lay down your yellow first, and then add some green on top to get a yellow green color. Then in a blue green, you would take a mixed green, or if you did a marker, do a green marker down and then just add a little bit of blue. That'll give your blue green. Same with violet. Violet, red and blue create violet. Then red violet would be your violet first, and then add red. Now, sometimes the violet, depending on the blue color you have, will be brighter than that, and other times it will almost look black. That's okay. You could always add a little bit of white to brighten up the violet if you would like to. Blue violet would be your violet first and then your blue. And these always seem a little silly, but it really, all three of them, if you mix all three of the primary colors together, it will create more of a brown tone. So using all three of them in dot patterns will give you more of a brown. So if you did a yellow brown, you want more yellow. Definitely lay your yellow down first, but make sure that there's a lot more yellow when you're done. So when you add red, don't do very many red dots. When you add blue, don't do very many blue dots. But in the green brown, you want more blue to show up because the blue is going to mix with the yellow to, tr to look more green. So yellow first still. Then you want blue and very little red. And in the red-brown, you want more red in that. Still lay your yellow down first, just a few little blue dots, and then way more red, okay? So I hope that makes sense, but this is a good exercise in learning how to do pointillism in, in a color fashion. But you can grab a brand new sheet of paper. That can always be done later or, um, or when you rewatch this video. You can um, kind of make your own boxes and try that out. But I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with the instruction of the piece. And you may have noticed that this time I didn't mention anything about a pencil or an eraser. You can draw out your piece with a pencil or eraser if you would like. That is, that will be fine. Do whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm just going to choose to draw with a, with a brush right now. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to do, like mix up some green because that's, the line work I want. I want the line work to be green, at least from here down. And the majority of what we're gonna draw out, um, I really want to have a green line. So, cause what we're going to end up doing, and I'll show you my thumbnail sketch, is like a tulip field in the Netherlands with a silhouette of one of the um, windmills in the background, but each one of these little pieces are going to be like a field of tulips. So we get to play with a lot of color and I just love that so much. Okay, so mixing up your green, I would grab quite a bit of yellow because you're gonna have to dip into it with your Q-tip. So I would use your brush and just try to get as much of the yellow paint off. Then clean your brush because remember you want to try to keep these as pure as possible. You can see I got a little bit of red in the white earlier. And then blue tends to be a pretty strong color. So you don't want a ton of it 
to mix into the yellow because it's always going to be easier to make the color or make the green a little darker by adding a little bit of blue. But if you start right off and uh, use a ton of blue, it's gonna be hard to make it green. It's gonna be look, it's gonna look more blue green. So, cause that yellow will really keep it a lot lighter. And I'm gonna use the Q-tip to mix it just because I don't wanna lose a ton of the paint in the brush when I'm not even gonna use the brush. And that looks pretty, well actually, I guess we are gonna use the brush for the line work, so excuse me, but at least it's mixing. And probably once you mix, you'll realize that there may not be enough paint, that's fine. And if you have a tube of green, you can go ahead and use that, it's fine. I just think it's important to also learn how to mix your colors. Uh, some people can really struggle with that. And I'm really just trying to get enough paint for us to be able to use as for our line work. So, and I'm using a pretty good size brush, but if you want a tinier brush, that's fine as well. But I want, I don't want to do the horizon line directly in the center. I want it to be kind of high up and just draw completely across or paint technically. And if your brush was kind of wet, you can always wipe it on the paper towel first. But I want a pretty good line going across. And don't worry about it trying to be straight or perfect or anything like that. You really don't need to worry about that. And the way we're doing the grass is gonna be what's called one point perspective. And I don't want it to be dead center on my piece because that's kind of typical. Let's try to do something a little not typical and set it off to the side. So let's say, and I'll kind of draw or paint a little bit of a spot there if you can see it. Just add like a little dot so you know where you're at. And then you just start drawing or painting lines based off of that dot because your main perspective is right here and everything is based off of that section. So you always wanna draw your field of flowers lines off of that circle. So it should start getting pretty close as we do lines. The lines up here should be pretty close together and then they should slowly spread apart and if you feel comfortable or using a um, pencil, you can always use a ruler to help draw your lines if that helps you. I know some people feel kind of insecure about drawing or trying to paint straight lines. And you may get some streakiness, and I really wouldn't worry about that. You can always go back over them with more green and you may not get as streaky if you have a tube of paint already of green. And I can already tell you that I'm gonna run out of <laughs> some green, but that, that's the way it is sometimes. I'm a little more comfortable with mixing green and I'm okay if the green's not exact each time. Um, so that's all dependent on you. If you want to already just grab some green and not mess with mixing, that's fine as well. Um, but just try to get some line work down. I'm gonna have to mix up some additional color. Okay. And continue with your lines. 
And why I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the paint to move is because my brush is pretty dry. I'm trying to keep it as dry as possible, but if it really does start aggravating you, just add a little bit of water to your brush and you'll get more of a clean line like you can see here. So if you feel like you need to go back over some of your lines, just add a little bit of water. Don't get real carried away, especially if you're using um, copy paper. But just enough so you can divide up the, the field. Because if you've never seen pictures of tulip fields in the Netherlands, each row tends to be the same color of tulip. But with so many thousands and thousands of them being painted together, they literally look like strips of the same color. And it's so beautiful. If you've never seen that, definitely Google um, tulip fields in Netherlands. So you can see an actual image of, of them. They're really gorgeous. In fact, you may see some places um, currently have tulips up or getting close to the end of growing season. That's the worst part about tulips is they, at least here, grow very in a very short window. <laughs> Let's see, just have to mix up a little more green. But I really wanna divide up this field with quite a few lines and yeah, it'll probably kind of merge itself in those last few, like they'll be pretty close together. Don't worry about it, that's fine. And again, I need a little bit more water. But like I said, I'm not trying to be real perfect with it. You can always go back over it But this just gives us something to go by as we fill in the spaces. Now, clean out your brush. And you can put that off to the side. And you'll grab a brand new Q-tip. And let's see what colors we should do in this first panel. And something like this will probably take a while. Um, so I'm just gonna do at least this first one and then I'm going to move up into the sky um, just so that I can show as much as I can while, so you can fill it in yourself. But let's see, let's do red, like just red but you'll do dots all together and in between the green lines. And it's fine to allow some of the white of the paper to show through. In fact, you can always move across the page through the top or you can follow your green line. But you can pretend that these are all tulips in a field. And this is definitely more of an abstract version of the field. But you'll just take that red and go across. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you want it to appear more red, definitely go across into some of the spots but try to keep it as, or fairly uniform so that you can see some of the dots. And if you kept hitting it with more red dots, it would look more brightly red, um, allowing some of the white to show through. It kind of um, makes the red lighter. <clears throat> you could always mix up some other color or use another, maybe like pink 
Or if you have a tube of orange, you can always work in some orange in there. But let's go ahead and I'm just gonna mix some orange here. And again, I would use the yellow first and just a little bit of the red because your red is the more powerful color, powerful. <laughs> and I'm gonna use the Q-tip to mix it up to get a really nice orange. And then I'm just gonna dab that in with the red. Now, because of there being so much red in it already, it's going to have more of a red-orange color to it because you're introducing that orange in there, but there's still a dominant red the way I laid it down. So if you had more space between your red, adding a second color would really make a big difference. But since I put red down, it's gonna still look pretty dominantly red. But just have fun with it. Like, don't worry about it not looking the way you expect it to. Um, I would definitely try to allow as much of the white of the paper to show as you can so you can see the, the dots, at least with a Q-tip. If you were using markers, the the dots would be so much smaller that you could really do something pretty different with it. Um, let's see, so let's do another color. Let's just do one of these um, spots. And since I, let's do a fairly dark or just the plain blue. And I know this is kind of a dark blue, and you can always use a lighter if you would like to. This one just happens to be um, already kind of a dark, but it mixes really beautiful colors with the other tones. So that's why a lot of times I'll just use it straight up. Because even though we have a sky, I'm going to make a lighter blue for the sky. And you may notice that this takes a long time, and it will, it just will. It's okay. Don't feel like you have to speed up the process. Enjoy making your dots and your pattern with your Q-tip and choosing colors. Because I think I'm going to use or just leave this blue all the way. Because I do really like this color a lot. And, but you can tell that there's already some variation because there's more paint when I first grab onto it. And it's just like a stamp, like stamping um, ink down. The first time you get a lot of ink on it, the stronger your, the amount of ink that's gonna be there. And as you keep stamping, it becomes lighter. So you can also use that to your advantage or if you really want that to stay pretty light, just stamp a little bit of it off to the side on your paper towel to take off some of the paint if you want to keep it pretty light. Or if you want it to be pretty dark with paint, I would just keep hitting the paint with your Q-tip frequently so that it stays pretty saturated with the color. And like I said, don't worry about it being exact or trying to make an exact pattern with it. It's okay for it to have some um, varied dots in it as well. And that makes a really pretty blue tulip. But of course, each one of these can be a complete different color. But what I want to try to do is start working with the sky. Now, obviously the sky is gonna be all blue, so you may want to, and you don't have to, you may wanna grab several Q-tips 
and you can kind of grab multiple amount, stick them all together, and you can either hold them like this, or if you happen to have a rubber band, you can always rubber band them together so that they don't go everywhere. And just sort of press them down so that you know all of them are kind of hitting the paper at the same level. <clears throat> and then, since we don't have a light blue already, I'm going to mix a light blue. So, we have our white already on here. I'm gonna grab quite a bit of it. And just a little bit of blue, because remember, that blue is so strong, and it's already so dark as it is, that you don't want it to get too, just overly dark. And I'm gonna, I am gonna mix it with all these Q-tips, because I kind of want it to have some of that variation. Some of it might, be a little more white. Looks like one's not even getting hit. Let's see, which one is it? There we go. And, and then this is where you can hit it up in the sky and then just move it around. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect circles. It just gets some paint down. You may want a little bit more blue and that's fine. And then it kind of gives some variation. Maybe at the top part of the sky, maybe it's a little darker than the bottom. So you can push that like a stamp all the way across and it should sort of diminish in color or slowly get lighter as you stamp it. But it's one way to be able to cover a real big distance especially if it's taking you a long time to cover your paper, and that's fine. Like I said, you want this to take some time. And since I'm gonna do some more light, light sections, I'm gonna, I added more white to my blue since I had darkened it. And I'm keeping the lighter blue down toward the horizon. And I'm just, and this can get kind of messy. I would just suggest um, trying to do this with your brush, mixing the paint. But this, if you're more comfortable with mixing, um, it's fine to do it this way as well. If you're not so confident with, with mixing, I would definitely use your brush before you try to use the whole bundle of Q-tips. But just keep going across the top. Gradually grab more paint as you go. Oops, as I throw that in the paint. And I didn't really say it before, but I hope you have something down on your, your table. <laughs> Or if you have a plastic table, that may not be a concern, but you don't want to get paint everywhere. <laughs> Even though acrylic does wash off, but still. Best not to have to wash a ton of stuff off. And it's just easier to lay some newspaper down or, or other paper that you are not concerned with getting paint on but just keep working away. And if you want this to be more uniform and you don't mind doing it one Q-tip at a time, that's fine too. I really am all about you finding your way of creating a piece. Okay, I'm just gonna lighten this a little bit more just so it kind of matches the left over there. Now you may be wondering why I don't have the windmill in there yet, but I really want the background of the sky to be established before we do a silhouette of that windmill. 
course, I'm adding some more dark stuff in the top of the sky. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave that the way it is. And of course, with this, you can always flip it over to the other side, but sometimes it's easier to just kind of put those aside and not worry about them anymore. <laughs> especially if you tend to be pretty messy with your art, which is no problem. And I would grab up your paintbrush. Now, we've got a nice horizon line of the green, and your um, windmill's going to be right along in here. And I'm going to do mostly dark blue, at least at first, to be sort of the silhouette. Now, you can always mix a little bit of red in it to be a more purpley blue, but since my blue's pretty dark, and we'll get it down here first and then worry about what it looks like, I'm going to, with, with this windmill, I'm almost going to do a triangle shape. So kind of figure out where the middle of that windmill will be. And just paint in your shape of a triangle. And again, if you're having a little trouble moving that around, just get a little bit of water. And it'll help push the acrylic paint around. And I'm going to go further into the grass of the horizon line. Make it thicker. And then I like to just simplify it and do like an X marks the spot on here. So get more of your blue, make sure you got enough water to help make it real smooth and just do your big X. Because why, what this is, is this is the part of the windmill that I think most people relate to. And it has little sails on the ends of each piece that helps push it or spin it. And then that powers whatever's going on inside. Sometimes there'll be, uh, at least in old days, you would have a, a wheel inside to help crush um, wheat into flour. Sometimes you see things called wind turbines that sort of have the same idea where they spin around when the wind blows and that helps power cities. But there's always like these little sail-like things on the ends. So I'm going to kind of extend a little section of the windmill. Now, again, I'm having a little trouble moving the paint. And if you happen to be having trouble up here and this is still really wet, just let it dry for a second before you start doing the windmill. Um, if, especially if you happen to notice that your paint is wanting to mix, then I would just do, I would just wait a little bit, continue with your tulips before you do your windmill. I'm just doing it sort of out of order so you can see. And I'm keeping the, the sail. And there might be more technical term, and I'm just, I just don't know it <laughs> for a windmill. But I would keep it pretty simple. Because 
because it is just supposed to be a silhouette. And you could always do like a sunrise in the background with tons of color, but you really don't need to because the tulips are gonna be so pretty and you get to use different colors. And you would, let's pick a different color next. Like, let's get some yellow going on just to kind of break up some of the darker and really strong colors. So I'm just getting dots of the yellow. I actually have yellow tulips at the side of my house, but not very many of them, but they are very pretty. I do like them. And this, since it is such a light color, if you feel like you have to really add a ton of dots, you may have to do dots that are closer together to make it look as yellow as possible because the white of the paper may diminish your color or may not make it seem as bright as you want it to. And that's okay. And as you're doing this, if you don't wanna follow what I'm doing, don't do something else. There's so many different things you could do other than like a landscape like this for uh, with pointillism. Maybe you want to do a portrait like Van Gogh did. I mean, I love his portrait. It would be a little challenging for sure, but it would be fun to try it, right? But something like this can, especially if you have kind of stress about how you make art and really don't feel like you're very creative, don't feel that way. Try Just try something fun like this where you're not really thinking about it. I think that's why a lot of adults have really gravitated towards adult coloring books now because they don't really have to think about um, the drawing itself, they can just sit and color. Well, this is sort of the same idea, really. Like you don't have to, it's kind of coloring it, but with paint, you can get as abstract as you want. You can almost do a Zentangle-like thing where just draw a bunch of lines and then fill it in with dots of color. And I think Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to add a little bit of red in with the yellow, just, just to kind of, I want some mixing to, going on, to go on. And according to our chart that I showed you at the beginning, this should kind of give it a visual appearance of some orange especially as you step back. And I'm not trying to get a ton of red on the Q-tip because I really want the yellow to sing pretty dominantly. And then let's see, what else should we do? Mm -mm -mm. And you can always mess with white. Remember, white always will lighten a color, so maybe we need a pink. I'm gonna use my brush to bring over some white. Probably should have started with the white first and then brought over some red, but that's okay. Then I'll grab another Q-tip to mix a pretty pink. And I may have to mix some more since since that might not last the whole time. But just enjoy it. Don't fret about it. There's no need. 
These are stressful times enough as it is. You should enjoy your creation. Enjoy creating. And this is really where you'll just keep going across the whole piece and adding more color. Now, since that's kind of salmon-y, I think I'm gonna grab some of the red as well, just like with the yellow and kind of work it in. But because that lighter color is in there, it will really change the way that red looks. and kind of putting that red in where the white is will kind of help darken your tone. Now something like this is an idea. If you had another idea or wanted to try a different one, um, you can always draw a trunk of a tree and the leaves of the tree can be done in this way with having a bundle of Q-tips or, or just try to create something with a bunch of dots, um, like a variation of color. It doesn't have to be all the same color. Like you wanna show some lights and darks. This we're keeping fairly simple. Like I could have done a darker pink up here and then gradually got lighter to show some gradation. I'm just more concerned with trying to get dots down. And you can already see that it looks so nice. Let's see, next color, let's do a purple, guys. We don't have a purple. I'm gonna mostly get red, just a little bit of blue, because. Like I've said, that really can dominate. And I'm going to grab some white because um, red, this particular blue and the red can really create quite a dark purple. And I want it to be pretty bright, or fairly bright at least. I don't want it to be too dark. And if it looks too muddy, or kind of dark, like really dark, just add more red. It'll be sort of a purpley or a more um, red violet. But the only way to really find out is just add a little bit of each color, mix. If it gets too dark, just try to mix in a little bit of a section of that whole thing to lighten it up because you can still keep some of your dark color. And it's gotten a little more blue, so I'm gonna add a little more red. And like I said, if you have a purple or a, or a violet already, use that. That's, get out that tube of paint or bottle. And then add those colors. Now it may look a little brown. It really does depend on the blue that you mix with the red. Sometimes they do just kind of do a dull purple, not, not quite like the ones that you see in a bottle already. So if that does bother you when you mix a color and you just can't get that right tone that you really like and you love purple, because I do, I do personally love purple, um, buy a tube of it. If you know you're going to use it, grab it, girl or boy. Grab it and run with it. 
Again, my Q-tip's getting kind of crazy because of how much mixing I was doing. And I'm not super concerned with trying to get perfect circles out of my Q-tip. It's just a way of mark making. It's a tool that you can use. And if you don't have anything like a brush, a paintbrush, you don't even have to do the green lines that I did. You can mark them out with a pencil and then just cover over your pencil lines with um, the colors. Or you could, we could have done little dots of green down through the center. And really you could go over top of it to do the dots now too. But okay. And I kind of want it to have a little bit of a blue violet feel. So I'm going to grab some of the blue and try to hit some of the spots that are white. more of it and I'm actually not a huge fan of that purple tone but it gives us something different for sure and I think the next one I want to mix up some orange so remember orange is yellow and red. So I'm going to get quite a bit of the yellow, just a little bit of the red. Wash off my brush. And I still have my orange Q-tip. And mix it on your palette. If you want it to be brighter, just add a little more yellow and maybe even a little bit of white. Ooh, the white really changes it, doesn't it? Okay, I think I'm gonna grab a little, because I don't want it to lose some of its pretty bright tone. Because white can kind of flatten or make something look a little more pastel. So one thing you could do too is do, do orange like all in this area and you can do a light orange at first. And then I think what I'm gonna do is the next color, I'm going to do a dark orange over top of it. Just something to think about. We really could have done that all over. Like in the red, it could have just been the pink and the red. And that way it would almost be a color study for you of what happens when you add white to a color. This one's getting pretty funny in its shape. Lovely. Okay, and I'm going to add some red to this to increase the darker side of the orange. I used my brush for that. But I'm going to mix, sorry, someone's at my door <laughs> knocking. And 
you can see it's a little darker. And then you can go down through that in some of the white areas. Or you could have just used the straight red. That's fine as well. And that probably would show a stronger color difference. between the light orange and the dark. And I'm actually going to work in some of the red, even though I did some of the darker orange. Might as well. It'll add more depth to, to it. And it's okay if you get some of the color up in your green it will just emphasize that as it goes further back that the flowers get tinier. And then let's go ahead back to the yellow. And just in case you may see some of my colors are starting to mix in my primary colors, um, I'm trying to keep an area fairly clean with the pure color. So just try to make sure there's an area that you can still get a true yellow on. And continue the dot patterns all the way down. going to leave that one dominantly yellow. We'll just leave that there. I think it adds some panache. Let's see. What should we do next? We don't, I'm not going to do green as one just because of the fact that we have green in between. Um, I don't know if there's a green tulip. There might be. So if you want to, go for it. I, I encourage it. But maybe, hmm, let's see. Maybe, maybe do another pink one. This is where you can have fun with playing with your colors, but you may have other tubes of paint that that mix or that you would like to try. And let's see. Because I know my pink there is kind of dry, so grab some more pink. Getting pretty far back there. Though I guess you could do the blue-green. There could be like a blue-green flower. Remember that would be doing the mixed green first and then add blue over top.
And we could do a lighter yellow or add more yellow, but I guess we could add white and it could be a really light green. Let's just experiment. Ah, actually it looks more like the green that's already there. But that's okay, because we're trying, we're going to cover it with blue. Okay, and that really completes it. You can always try a different way. You don't have to do the colors that I did, but this is really the whole piece that I was planning on. Once it dries, definitely sign your piece. You can sign it along the bottom or sign it on the back, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I hope you guys enjoyed this program and learn something from it. It's something kind of different, um, not traditional painting, and it's always fun to try something new and, and something that you're not used to. So if you had even sheets of paper, or maybe if you started an art journal as well, I encourage you to mess with this kind of thing in that as well. Um, if you have really little kids that may not be very good with trying to fill in a landscape, grab, I would definitely do it on like a canvas or something really heavy material. Um, watercolor paper by Canson would do really great as well. And grab some painter's tape or masking tape. Masking tape's usually that tan yellowish. And you can, tape down on their sheet of paper, um, creating maybe their first initial of their name. So my name is Jamie, so I could do a J and mark it out on the canvas and just have them go to town with the Q-tips and the colors and just do their dots all around. And then when they're done with it, they can you can pull up the tape after it's dry, of course, you can pull up the tape and the white of the canvas or watercolor paper will show they'll need to do a, quite a covering of dots like you can see here and so that the white that was protected by the tape because this is masking off that that letter should be white and it should show their letter pretty clearly um, so that's always another project that you can do instead of something like this but this is really fun. I really like doing this kind of thing. Or try this again and do what I was suggesting, more of a gradient where we did do light blue to darker blue, but try that with the flowers as well. Maybe just do one panel of red and make it uh, try to go from a dark red to a lighter red or a darker blue to a lighter blue, um, dark yellow, to a light yellow. Um, just have fun with it. That's all that this should be. 
don't stress about it and I hope you keep coming up with projects and inspirations and sharing them with us. I had so much fun with you guys. I hope you have a great time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.